But probably the most interesting thing continues to be the hiring after the firing of coaches in the NFL. And so uh, now we have one minority candidate who got a job over the weekend. Like we're like we're what 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 Jason Jason Stewart what what. I, I had not known that that candidate was multiracial until Adam Schefter felt the need to point it out when he broke the news. I, I find that peculiar. But uh, what do you find, Why do you find peculiar? That he breaks the news of a major uh, sports head coaching hire, and he felt the need to point out that he identifies as, as a certain right. race. I felt that to be peculiar. Rappaport did as well. Yeah, um, but, uh, you know, again, part of it is if you're following on social media – Mike McDonald, who's the now the the McDaniel. Mike Mike McDaniel, sorry, Mike McDonald, Mike McDaniel, who's the. Other <laughs> <laughs> good dolphins are gonna do very good. Uh, Mike McDaniel, who's on is on a plane to become be announced as the Dolphins' new head coach. He doesn't look like a minority candidate, right? I mean, that's like we're like we're, we can sit here and beat around the bush and say all kinds of different ways of the same thing. So most anybody who is Try paying attention to the NFL and Brian Flores is suing the NFL and saying they're racist in their hiring. He's like, see, You're like, no, 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 hold on. He's actually, I don't, it doesn't, shouldn't actually matter, but it does matter. I mean, it's like, it's like we said, it honestly, I know what people think. I, I understand that when Roger Goodell comes out just days after the NFL put out a statement saying the lawsuit has from Brian Flores has no merit, and then he basically says, hey, fellas, we got to do better. You're like, wait, those are contradictory memos. I don't think they are because I think what Roger Goodell is saying is what most people think, which is like, look, the hiring practices, they are what they are, and you're allowed to hire whoever you want to hire, but anyone can look at it and go, that, that doesn't look great. It just doesn't, you know? The, the, the problem with the argument is you'll get people who will say, well, the Giants. Well, didn't the Giants have Jerry Reese as their GM for a long time? Like, wasn't he a, like over a decade, like their, their GM? So y you're only racist now in your hiring practices, but not then? That, that one is really confusing. And then, of course, Lovey Smith looks like he's going to get the job in Houston where maybe they wanted to hire Josh McCown is their head coach. I told you Brian Flores was toxic. No chance you get a job when you're suing the NFL, and I believe that's the case. I believe he'll be kind of locked out of the NFL, if you will, which is what happens. In, all of this stuff is what happens in business, right? What happens in – and by the way, the other thing that happens in business is businesses copy one another, and they try and top one another. That's why Mike McDaniel – not Mike, Mike McDonald <laughs> – Oh, he just <laughs> on me. Um, that's why he has the job, because he's one of the young, smart, brainiac dudes who's really well-respected, who's been with Kyle Shanahan going back to the Atlanta days, the Washington days, and has respect throughout the league. But look at the two coaches who are coaching on Sunday. <laughs> They're, again, all kind of apples of similar trees. And I don't believe it has anything to do with race. I think it just has to do with the fact that the, the NFL is evolving into a – you have on one side what Dan Campbell's trying to do in Detroit, which is, you know, he's the energy guy and then hire all former players as coaches. And a good portion of the rest of the league is trying to hire the smartest dudes possible, the youngest dudes possible, regardless of race or even background or even if they played football. It's more, hey, we're trying to be smarter because – Honestly, I feel like players are smarter, and they want to be challenged by people who have done the work. And I think that's the case with general managers, right? Like, again, you see the, the Bears hired a former player, Ryan Poles, but again, seen as a really smart guy, a BC guy, and then uh, uh, Kwesi uh, Adolfo Mensu is hired, again, like Brainiac dude, who's from d the derivative market. He's got an Ivy League degree. That's the trend in the league is young, smart, analytics, and finding a way to communicate with players on a level that's above the, hey, I played and listened to me sort of thing. And then you have Lovey Smith with the Houston Texans, and the Texans feel like they're a mess. And it's not because Lovey wasn't a Super Bowl champion, a Super Bowl coach. He took the Bears to the Super Bowl with Rex Grossman as their quarterback, by the way. Remember that? That was a really weird Super Bowl when he had to answer questions about who his starting quarterback would be going into the Super Bowl. Rex Grossman's our quarterback. Rex Grossman's our quarterback. 
That was, by the way, the year that Denny Green uh, 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 authored the old, they are who we thought they were, and we let them off the hook, right? You want to crown them? Crown them? Mm -hmm. They were who we thought they were, and they weren't let off the hook by the Indianapolis Colts, right? The Colts beat them in the Super Bowl. That, yes. was, that was Peyton Manning, yes. So the, the point is that I, I think we have all of these stories, but to me, I actually, ma it makes sense what Roger Goodell is saying. And it does make sense that Lovey Smith was hired with the Texans. He has equity with the team. He ran their defense. And there wasn't any way in hell that, that you can be a Houston Texans organization when your owner has been accused of things. And remember, the Houston Texans, they had a black general manager for a long time. They did. And then people thought Rick Smith did a bad job. I actually thought he did a pretty good job. He lost his job. And then the coach had the power of the head coach and general manager, and that didn't work. That was Bill O'Brien, and kind of here we are. But I, I, I think that Roger Goodell kind of speaks for everybody sort of in the middle. It's like, look, the, the procedures, they are what they are, and the, the, the idea is getting different voices and faces in front of you in order to interview. The problem with it is it just doesn't appear to be working well enough, and we all got to do better. Because we all got to get to the point to where we don't look at a coach and go, well, he's a white. We don't look at Mike McDaniel getting a job and go, like, well, is he white or is he black when he gets the job? Oh, he's white. Wait, no, he's black. You, that, we, shouldn't, we should be evolved past that. I do think we actually are. But the problem with it is the numbers just jump out at you. I don't think it has anything to do, by the way, with, well, there's 75% players in the NFL and, and there should be, like, it's a different field. Right? It's a different field. Radio is the perfect example of it. Television is the perfect example of it in that, yes, for analyst roles, oftentimes you have to have played. And I do think that as a coach, it helps when you have played. Do you have to play in the NFL to be a coach in the NFL? The answer, I believe, is no. Does it help? Of course it does. But you also have to remember that most of these coaches, they played some sort of football and even the Sean McVay or the uh, Brandon Staley playing small college football, and then they get done, and they immediately go to work as a coach. I believe that playing like Josh McCown did for 18 years, I think that actually qualifies you as a coach. But many people do not. They think you had to have coached in order to coach. Now we got a lot to get to this week. I, 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 I would like to champ and pat myself on the back. I thought Brian Flores, when he was initially fired, I think he would have gotten the Texans job. I believe it. He w Those are New England Patriot guys. They need a strong voice as a head coach. It helps him that he's won games. He brings credibility, and he has a relationship with the front office. Those are all expatriates. I don't mean expatriates where there's Americans living overseas. I mean, they used to be with the Patriots organization, and that's how it works in all businesses, especially the NFL, where if you work with somebody, there's a comfort with somebody, and he has respect of guys in the locker room. I think he would have gotten the job. I think he cost himself the job with the lawsuit and with the follow-up interviews and many of the ac accusations in the lawsuit that didn't actually have anything to do with racism. Had he simply talked about the, the hiring practices and kept them along the racial uh, racial discussion, I think he still would have had a shot and maybe gotten it had he pointed out the, all the issues in Miami, whatever your perspective is, whether they really paid him to dump games or not, or how he was the narrative within that building. Had he simply you know, filed a wrongful termination lawsuit, I think he would have been hired in Houston. But when you factor in that he's suing the entire league in a class action lawsuit, calling out all the hiring practices of the league, and then he's airing dirty laundry saying John Elway was hung over and they tell me to dump games. And then he goes on the media blitz. He doesn't get a job that he probably should have gotten. And I think he would have been really good at. And, and to the other people in the media who have picked up my quotes from last week where I said he should have been, what was the word? You, you got contrite. Some, some big reaction. Contrite. He should have shown contrition. Okay. So let me explain how it actually works to guys like this is to, there's a guy, named Roland Martin, is that his name, right? Didn't he used to work at CNN? Now I think he does his own shop, right? He's, he's, a, he's a political commentator. Let me explain what I mean in terms of contrition. Uh, I come from a world of, of a family of coaches, okay? And when coaches get fired, most of them 
are have contrition. They start kind of go through the things they could have done better. Now, in sports, a lot of times they sit there and go like, if this guy didn't get hurt, if that ref didn't screw me, if this kid would have showed up on campus or not flunked out, or if this game would have gone one different way. What I mean in terms of contrition is he may not have deserved to be fired. There may have been, he may have been right with all the things he pointed out about Chris Greer. He's probably right that they shouldn't have drafted Tua Tug of Iloa. Right? Like if he said, hey, you know, at the end of the day, if, if privately he said, you know, had we just drafted Justin Herbert, <laughs> I'd still be employed. You know? But when I say contrition, all you have to say is, like, look, some of these, I probably could have handled what I said better. I could have handled this situation differently. I could have handled how I spoke to the owner differently. I could have handled how I worked with people. Because if you don't do that, again, you're, you're going into that realm of repeating the same mistake over and over again, which is the definition of insanity, right? So when I say contrite, I'm not saying contrition for not getting jobs. I'm talking about what almost every coach I've ever seen, they go through, when they get fired, they're everybody's best friend. And they're the night, and they get back to being normal human beings because they're not head coach, and people don't address them as coach and try and, you know, there's not a, a people circling around doing everything they can because their words matter. Right? When you're a coach, you're a powerful empire emperor of your little fiefdom. That's how it works. And a lot of times, guys' egos get a little bit out of control. And a Brian Flores, what everyone that I know in sports is saying is, man, he was hard to work for. You know. A position coach would get there at 5.30 in the morning and he's waiting for him in his office to just line him out on all the things that his position coaching was, was going wrong. You know, going through three completely new staffs in three new years, especially in the offensive side of the ball. If you come out and go like, look, I probably could have, my first hire, I could have handled it differently. I could have let those guys do their thing. I could have been a little easier to work for. I could have listened more and talked less. Like all the different kind of cliche sayings, which you actually do have to do, it's your first head coaching job. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to rub people the wrong way, either for being too uh, bold or being too viewed as too meek. So when I say contrition, it's more for any mistake you've made. Because if you give, it's just like in humor. If you're slightly self-deprecating, your hardcore humor goes over way better. If you give us a little bit of something, hey, I could have done this differently. Hey, I could have done that differently. Instead, Brian Flores is still in the, I did nothing wrong. They're all idiots. And the reason I'm out of a job is the color of my skin. Right? When the problem with that is the guys who you wanted out, the guys who the owner sided with are also black. The GM, the assistant GM, the director, player, personnel, right? So it doesn't, the narrative and what you're creating, one doesn't fit with what's seen as a reality. But more than anything, when I say contrition, it's more, hey, I made some mistakes. I could have done things better. Next time, I'm going to be even better. Just like Belichick. Privately, do, does, will Bill Belichick say in Cleveland he did anything wrong? Probably not. But publicly, you got to give us something. Even if it's fake contrition, a little bit of contrition goes a long way. And I believe he would be a head coach today, but he's not.